Yeah. You can follow me at fee.org slash rev1. That's a website that gives you all my social media. If you want to follow me directly, you can go on Twitter at TK underscore Coleman. You can go to Instagram at official TK Coleman. But you can find all that stuff if you just go to the page fee.org slash rev1. Final thoughts. There are two fundamentally different ways that you can approach changing the world. The way of conversion and the way of subversion. The way of conversion is you treat the problem with the world as if there are just too many people who believe the wrong things. And what we have to do is we've got to argue those people into the right way of seeing things. And if we can just argue enough people into the right way of seeing things, then we'll win because they'll do the right things, like maybe you vote for the right people or whatever it may be. This is why every election, people are really upset because they feel the pain. At least half the country feels the pain of the way of conversion failing them yet again. This is why we get upset when we try to argue with our friends about our political ideologies and they don't see it. And maybe they just accuse you of hating the poor or whatever it may be. We get upset because the way of conversion has failed us. But there is another way. The way of conversion has its place, but it's not the only way. There are people who have seen the light because of the way of conversion, but it is not the only way. There is the way of subversion. The way of subversion is when you gradually undermine the, the dominant incentive structure by innovating around systems of oppression in such a way that you influence people's behavior to live freely, even though they haven't consciously bought in to the freedom idea. I am not here to try to just change the way people see the world. I want to change the world that people see. And when you look at how societies change, there are a lot of powerful forms of change that happen in the world without requiring the permission of anybody to submit to your philosophical arguments. You know, it's funny. I think about when when Facebook or Twitter first came out, people were like, that's stupid. Sounds dumb. I don't get it. Try to argue family and friends into it. Sounds dumb. I don't get it. Sounds stupid. When I think about Uber, first brought it up to people, I don't really get it. Sounds stupid. Just sounds like a taxi ride, but a serial killer could take me for a ride and nobody know where I'm at. Now, everybody's on Facebook. Everybody's using Twitter. Everybody's using Uber. Is it because we had a mass conversion experience where everyone finally saw the philosophical light? No, that's not why it happened. It happened because innovators and entrepreneurs and pragmatists worked day in and day out to create a product, to create a service, to create a tool that was so useful to people that in spite of their beliefs, they started to use it anyway and the network effects began to take off. I think many of us who love the idea of freedom, we limit ourselves and we put ourselves in positions to always be discouraged because we limit our power to changing the way people see the world and we overlook the power that we have to change the world that people see. And this is what the entrepreneur brings to the discussion. No matter what the system is, no matter how oppressive it is, there will always be an element of human creativity. And if we can place faith in that element, we can trust in that element, we can, we can commit ourselves to that element in season and out of season, we can move the needle in the direction of freedom. Some people accuse me of being an optimist for believing that. I'm not an optimist. I'm a pessimist about the right things. I can't place faith in what a lot of people out there place faith in. I just can't bring myself to a position where I can have such an optimistic faith that all we got to do is get the right person in office and everything is going to be okay. I, I just will never have enough faith for that. I'm just not that optimistic. I side with Milton Friedman here. The solution is not to get a good person to run the system. The solution is to create a system that incentivizes even the bad person to do the right thing. I don't want a world of good individuals. I don't have faith that I'm going to create that kind of world. I want a world with good incentives. And that's something that we can all contribute to creating, even if we feel like we're losing arguments with people who are too stubborn.